Digestion of lipids Foods like cheese, butter, nuts and seeds, chocolate contain fat. In this lesson, you will learn how lipids are hydrolyzed or broken down and absorbed out of the digestive tract. Now, a lipid is defined as a fat-like molecule that does not have the ability to dissolve in water. That is why fats are difficult to digest. Because fat doesn't like water, it tends to clump together and form large droplets as it moves through your digestive system. By the time fat reaches your small intestine, it has not been digested at all. These clumps remain until bile that is produced in the liver and stored in the gallbladder mixes with the large fat droplets. Now bile contains bile salts which act as an emulsifier of lipids. The term emulsify means to break large fat droplets into smaller droplets. That is exactly what we see here in the small intestine. The bile salts break up the fat to form much finer droplets. Pancreatic lipase acts on lipid and breaks it down into fatty acids and glycerol. The two digestive products of lipids. These products are absorbed by the small intestine. Now you will see here this is a schematic representation for the hydrolysis of lipids. We are going to see how the Lipids droplets are been hydrolyzed by lipase into fatty acids and glycerol. Now let's look at this example about the digestion of lipids. We have two test tubes. In the two test tubes, we have the same substrate, 5 grams of sheep fat. In the first tube, the sheep fat in cube, while in the second, the sheep fat is chopped. We are going to add water, lipase, and boil to the two test tubes and then they are placed in a water bath at 37 degrees celsius now in the second document we are going to see that in both tubes at the beginning of the experiment they have the same amount of sheep fat which is five grams at the end of the experiment the amount of sheep fat in tube a decreased from five to two grams while in tube b it disappeared now if we look at the first question the first question was to draw a histogram bar graph showing the variation of the mass of sheep fat in each of the tubes a and b at the beginning and at the end of the experiment first of all to draw a histogram we are going to write the scale on the y-axis which and we are going to write the mass of the sheep fat in gram on the x-axis we don't have a scale since we don't have numbers we are going to write beginning and end of the experiment we are going to write the legends uh, so we can differentiate between the two tubes tube a and tube b then we are going to write a title the second question is analyze the obtained results document 2 in the analysis we have to write the variable factor and the result and since we have numbers we are going to write increase decrease or constant now for the analysis we have to write uh, the variable factor and the result so the variable factor is the sheep we don't have numbers we are going to write beginning and end of the experiment we are going to write the legends uh, so we can differentiate between the two tubes tube a and tube b then we are going to write a title the second question is analyze the obtained results document 2 in the analysis we have to write the variable factor and the result and since we have numbers we are going to write increase decrease or constant now for the analysis we have to write uh, the variable factor and the result so the variable factor is the sheep fat in the first tube uh, they are in cube while in the second one they are shot while the results the decrease in mass the first one from 5 gram to 2 gram while in the second one it disappeared so the mass of the sheep fat in cube in tube a decreased from 5 to 2 gram within three hours similarly in tube b placed under the same conditions as those of tube a the mass of chopped sheep fat decreased more to become nil after three hours now in the analysis we don't have to write the common conditions twice so that's why we write the same conditions or placed under the same conditions in the conclusion we have to start with we conclude or i conclude we conclude that the chopped fat is digested more rapidly than the fat in cube 
Now concerning the second conclusion about the mechanical digestion facilitates the chemical digestion, wait until we explain activity number five. Then you are going to, to understand this conclusion. The final question was, what are the end products of this digestion or the digestion of lipids? So the end product of lipids or the digestion of lipids are fatty acids and glycerol. 